Hi, I'm Nada. And I'm Reese. And today we're asking, is Jesus even real? This is Clear Series. Have you ever wondered how you can tell the difference between real and fake news? It wasn't so long ago that we had to worry about whether UFOs, aliens or the Loch Ness Monster were a made up scam. But looking at the latest crazy headlines nowadays, it's hard to figure out if anything is genuine anymore. It's when it comes to figuring out the existence of a historical person like Jesus Christ, how on earth can we know if we're talking about real history or an ancient myth? What can you prove about someone who supposedly lived over 2,000 years ago in the Middle East? Without the benefit of modern technology, searching for people in history can feel like an almost impossible task. Sadly, we can't send a detective back in a time machine, at least not yet anyways. So if Jesus turned out to be faker than your friend's <laughs> new Gucci bag, doesn't that basically mean that the whole of Christianity was born out of a prank? Yet you don't need to wade through receipts, phone records or CCTV footage to know if a historical figure existed. There's often loads of evidence that has stood the test of time. We obviously can't check Jesus' online profile, but we can mark a distinct point in history when his followers started talking about him all over the place. And those conversations left their mark in history. The life of Jesus triggered a massive download. Not of pics, posts and memes, but of writing, letters and documents. Four of Jesus' friends, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, shared their messages widely amongst the same communities they came from, so they could have easily been exposed as fake news. Yet the story stuck. Even archaeologists have been able to back up many of the practical details that are talked about in their surviving documents. This written evidence came not just from those who were fans of Jesus either. Local journalists like Josephus and Tacitus, who were not part of Jesus' crew, produced articles that confirmed details of his life. One nasty Roman called Pliny even wrote letters that spoke great pleasures about arresting and torturing some of the first Christians just for fun. What a loser! <laughs> the very mention of the term Christian on public record so soon after Jesus was around is a massive indication that someone real had come on the scene. A Christian was a follower of Christ, and you wouldn't have believers without an actual Justin Bieber. You wouldn't have Swifties without Taylor Swift, and you certainly wouldn't have Christians without there being someone called Jesus Christ. Even when faced with the prospect of terrible death, those who had met Jesus didn't renounce their story and claim, we made it all up or we were only joking. I don't know people that would give up their real life for fake news. Jesus was deemed so significant that today's date has been affected by his year of birth. And if this man really is part of our history, then that probably gives us some questions for our future. How do you know something exists? How do you know if something isn't or is? Or what's even more perplexing is, how do you know that something existed in the past? Well, you have to look for proof of its existence that lasts. Things like books and artifacts, all of which present proofs of the past to us in the present. But why does it matter that these things existed? Well, it's because they change us when they reach us. If something was real for them in the past, it is real for us. If it changed the way they saw themselves, it should change the way we see us. Whether that real thing was a kingdom or a movement or a person like the man we know as Jesus. For through history books, testimonies, and artifacts, we know Jesus was real. His existence is a fact. And since that is true, we need to ask, what does the real Jesus of the past mean for the present you? <laughs>